Coming up on Small Town Big Deal, an iconic TV show comes off the screen and onto Main Street. We're around every corner, it's endearing characters come to life. What do you think you're doing there, buddy? You can't be staring in windows. That's peeping Tom action right there. It's a unique celebration that honors one of TV's biggest hits with all kinds of bells and whistles. Welcome to Small Town Big Deal. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. You know, we've covered a lot of festivals on the show, but this is the first time we've been to one where it's completely centered around a television show. Yeah, but we're betting every one of you has seen at least one episode. Or if you're like Rodney, every episode several times over. But in the words of Barney Five, we don't have time to sit around and discuss trivial trivialities. No, you're right. You know what? We have a town to explore. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> a small town in North Carolina that was home to a little boy named Andy who learned many life lessons here. When he grew up, he turned those lessons into a very big and very beloved deal. We're betting you figured out we're talking about Andy Griffith and his unforgettable TV show. It featured characters like Sheriff Taylor, Aunt B, Opie, and so many more. Welcome to Mayberry, I'm Barney Pike. Welcome to Mayberry, I'm Juanita from the diner. Welcome to Mayberry, this is Mayor Pike. Hope you have a great day. The show was set in the town of Mayberry, and although it was a fictitious town, it was modeled after Andy's real hometown of Mount Airy, North Carolina. Every year, the town pays tribute to the show by hosting Mayberry Days. Hello everybody, welcome to Mayberry Days. Be it proclaimed that the mayor and the board of commissioners of the city of Mount Airy do hereby proclaim Mayberry Days as a tribute to the show that has instilled values of friendship, honesty, and overall good living. Mount Airy, North Carolina is about 34 miles northwest of Winston-Salem, and fans visit year-round to enjoy some Mayberry nostalgia. There is no other show in the history of television in America that has the staying powers, this one. Well, I have the privilege of talking with just about everybody. I always ask them, what is it about the show that you love? Yeah. And they will say, it's who I watched it with. We both grew up watching it. Our parents used to watch it all the time. My dad loved to, the intrigue of it and the funny, but yet it was family friendly. Yeah. So it was really something that we all could enjoy together. I think there is truth to that, that we think back to what we think was a simpler time. Mount Airy, Mayberry, the concept is, is all about that. A simpler time, a simpler place. You can exhale. Even though it's been more than 50 years since the Andy Griffith Show ran its eighth and final season, the staying power of the show is remarkable. Since it first went on the air in 1960, it's reported that through reruns, it's never been off the air. Right. That's created generations of show enthusiasts, even from across the globe, and they know the best time to visit is in September, when Mayberry Days is in full swing. Some of the original cast members or their family members ride in the annual parade, like Don Knotts' daughter. Hey, Karen! Tribute artists are also here and step into the roles of many beloved characters. I hear you. It's funny. There's not many Andy impersonators. Nobody wants to be the straight man. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're a really big fan, you'll understand how some of the parade entries relate back to specific episodes. I got my tinfoil ball, too. So if you don't know the significance of the cow, it's really funny. One of the bad guys put shoes on the cow so it looked like they were three thieves. You know, Hollywood has a reputation of brushing aside actors and actresses once they get over a certain age. Well, if you were on the Andy Griffith Show and you come to Mount Airy, you will be celebrated and cherished, especially in a parade. Even with the crowds of people here, you never have to worry about security. There's plenty of law enforcement around. What do you think you're doing there, buddy? You can't park here, we got cones and everything. Keep Rick Roberts is a professional comedian and speaker who creates 100% clean comedy and keynote speeches. 
He's a member of the Christian Comedy Association, and he's developed a Barney Fife that's one of the best you'll ever see. What do you think you're doing there, buddy? You can't be staring in windows. That's peeping Tom action right there. I'm just window shopping. I don't trust the man in shades right now, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Something's going down right here. So, Rick, what is the best thing you like about impersonating an American icon? The best part is everybody's happy to see you. <laughs> what is your favorite line or thing that Barney did that you remember the most? Sometimes they just have Andy and Barney sitting on the front porch yeah. talking. Just like real people do in yeah. real life. That's hard for us fives. Everything we eat goes to muscle. See there? I see. My mother was the same way. Mm -hmm. She could just eat, 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 eat. No wood fat, huh? No where it went? Muscle. Yeah. Probably my favorite line of Barney, and most iconic moment for me, is nip it, nip it in the bud. You gotta nip it <laughs> in the bud. <laughs> You gotta do some bud nipping around here, Rodney. You did a lot better than me. Yeah. <laughs> what makes Mayberry Days here special? Everybody can step away from all the noise in the world, whatever problems they have at home, and you come here and you just connect with people again. Instantly, you all have something in common. They also taught us a lot about life lessons. Well, I think that the really cool part is the show has never really left the air for any length of time Good that point. I know of. The storylines and the lessons are transcendent, but lessons you learn in every generation. Hey, it sure looks awful empty, don't it, Pa? Yes, son, it sure does. But don't the trees seem nice and full? We'll be right back with Floyd the Barber and Ernest T. Bass. It's me, it's me, it's Ernest T. Pies. Get set. And lots more Mayberry fun. <laughs> Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. If you visit Mayberry Days in Mount Airy, North Carolina, you're bound to meet people you feel like you've known for years. <laughs> he hasn't given me a bad haircut yet. Did you see that he needed a trim? I saw you get... I did. I was going to kind of trim up in the back there. <laughs> I thought he was getting caught in his collar a little bit. That's just a, that's a habit of a barber, you know. How long have you been doing this? Well, have, have barbering? Oh, 28 years. 28 <laughs> years, yeah. This is my 28th Mayberry days. Now I'm going to talk to Alan for a second. Yeah. What is it that you love about being Floyd? You just bring smiles to people's faces. I want to bring the magic of what was Mayberry to the people here at Mayberry Days, where people could get along, and even if they disagree about things, they could do it nicely. Yeah. It would be nice, wouldn't it? I don't know whether to say goodbye, Alan, or goodbye. Lloyd is fine, but if you need a haircut, just drop by and I'll trim that up. Yeah. <laughs> In addition to having fun with the characters, there's a lot of competitive fun at Mayberry Days. From cornhole, there you go. to the hay bale toss, which our executive producer, Roger Marr, won hands down. Way to go, Roger. On the main stage is Mayberry Idol, spelled I-D-L-E, which is an entertaining and diverse talent show. There's also the ever-popular Andy Griffith Show trivia contests. What did Opie give his friend Jimmy for making fun of his girlfriend Charlotte? Oh my gosh, you go girl! So I've probably seen all 249 episodes several times, but the level of detail? I didn't get any of the kids' questions right. I don't stand a chance in the adult competition. So instead, we sign up for the pie eating contest. Get set, eat! First, the kids show us how it's done. Eat! When it was our turn, I clearly cheated. But the judges didn't see that Rodney came in third. Okay, Rodney's so mad they didn't see that he probably got third place. He doesn't even see that I'm eating it with a spoon. The decision of the judges is final. I'm sorry, there are no appeals here in the Mayberry. Jan, you can't use a spoon. Hey, at least I got a trophy. Daintiest eater. But you can't use a spoon. Well, apparently for the daintiest eater you can. Okay, you ready? Yep. But my favorite contest was apple peeling. Inspired by an episode where Andy peeled an apple in one long piece, so we gave it a shot. I've never used one of these before. Rodney quickly proves yet again he has not spent much time in the kitchen. Will you just peel your apple? Do you know where the kitchen is in your house? Oh, oh man! Oh man! 
I'm not even going to discuss my apple peeling skills. Did it break again? Or lack of. Here's my peel. Measure it. Yay. I think Jen's got a chance with this one. 54 and a half. Yay. So far, I'm in first place, but I'm the only one that's turned in their peel yet. I think 54 inches has got a shot, though. You think? 54 and a half. 54 and a half. You, you, didn't, you didn't bring any of your peelings over. It's because none of them were more than 12 inches, I don't think. Okay, wait, you think one of them was 12? <laughs> I ended up in third place, but there's still plenty to whistle about at Mayberry Days. Small town, big deal, America's TV show is here. Oh, they're here too? That's right. Time to pucker up and see who's got the best rendition of that well-known theme song. <laughs> and the other parts of the song going at the same time, but apparently no one appreciated that. I thought the snaps were pretty authentic, but we were out whistled. But our thoughts of losing the competition vanished the minute we ran into Ernest T. Bass. It's me, it's me, it's Ernest T. <laughs> when Rodney told me that he had only appeared in a few episodes, how many? Right, he was in five episodes as Ernest T. Bass. Well, he made such an impact for only being in five episodes. He was just so different from the rest of the people yeah. around him. Phil was an actor doing small movie roles and live shows when he started doing Ernest T. And he understands the continued love of Mayberry. You come into the show and here's some problems and within 30 minutes we have those problems solved everyone's happy everyone treats each other pretty much with respect well Ernest T it's great to meet you man wonderful to finally meet finally in, in person after all these That's years it. yeah <laughs> oh can I kiss you on the job <laughs> I'm declaring for you stay with us for more Mayberry love old and new Coming right up. You's watching Small Town Big Deal here with Ernest T. Bass. And you ain't heard the last of Ernest T. Bass. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal, where Mayberry Days in Mount Airy, North Carolina is in full swing. Welcome to Mayberry, folks. A highlight of a trip here is a visit to the Andy Griffith Museum, dedicated to the life of the man who inspired it all. When people come, they come for Sheriff Taylor, but there was so much more to Andy. So much more. When folks come, I do try to encourage them to experience Andy in his fullness, and that's what the museum does. It tells the entire life and story of Andy, so that's early years growing up in Mount Airy, comedy, Broadway, film, television, and a lifelong recording career. Andy also won a Grammy for a gospel album. Certainly a multi-talented man. Where's the famous phone? Yeah. Where he talked to Juanita, sweet Juanita. Ah. And a lot of these are original artifacts. Yes. They're mm -hmm. like the original Barney suits mm -hmm. and shirt of Andy's and so much more here. Wow. I can spend half a day in here. Oh, he's getting a star on the Walk of Fame. So it's interesting that Matlock was actually on the air for nine seasons, and Andy Griffith, hey. Did he get the Medal of Freedom? Look at that. For Mayberry Days. What do you hope people leave with? The show is about lifting one another up, to be mindful of others and courteous and neighborly. We have the largest open-faced granite quarry in the world. A great way to learn about the rest of Mount Erie is to climb aboard the Good Time Trolley, owned and operated by another hometown son, Warner Dodson. And he would ride his bike up through town, right up through this area. We wanted to add something back to Mayberry. Beautiful little town, kind of like a fairy tale almost. Yeah. And people come here to get away from a lot of things and just relax and have a good time. That's where Carl and his dad worked. Warner told delightful stories of Andy Griffith as a child, showed us his childhood home, and let us know you can sleep in Andy's house overnight as part of the Mount Airy Hampton Inn. 
This home was started by Mr. Merritt. Werner shared so much history of the town and its Mayberry connections. I did not know there was a real Mayberry. I didn't either. And then his mother was born there. Yeah. How did you learn all that? Well, I moved here. I was five years old and just studied the town. Beautiful little town. I've been here a little over 50 years. Morning. Just good people. But all throughout the community, people do gestures of kindness. These last two homes down on your, on your right, they have a lot of weddings, birthday parties, at no charge as long as you clean it up. If you're out walking and, and want a cold drink, she'll have, have water setting out for our guests, so feel free to stop by and take one. It's just a magical town. I'm elated to be part of it. You know, if we can do something to help people, make people smile, that's what it's all about. If you're a skeptic and think the show really isn't relevant any longer, think again. Two new films based on the show were recently released, a documentary and a comedy. The Mayberry Effect explores the positive impact the show has had on both its lifelong fans and the town of Mount Erie. I think you'd find it very interesting about how the Andy Griffith show has affected a lot of American culture. So in our vocabulary and our shows, from country music to bluegrass to rap music, you know, when you end up having the Beastie Boys mention Otis Campbell, <laughs> then you know it's, it's got a wide appeal. Documentary filmmaker Chris Hudson has boiled down the biggest effect to one important thing. The biggest Mayberry effect is just the love. I think Mayberry equals love. The second film is a comedy called Mayberry Man and stars some of the tribute artists we met today. I brought another legacy from the Mayberry Andy Griffith show. My father was on two episodes and the writer, producer, director Stark Howell's father, Hoke Howell, was also on the Andy Griffith show. Is there an arc that the, your lead goes through. Absolutely. So our lead actor is sort of a narcissistic guy from LA and during the festival he sort of learns the true value of friendship and family. Speaking of family, Don Knotts daughter Karen Knotts, who just wrote a book about him, is here to enjoy sweet memories. And Dixie Griffith, Andy's daughter, is here every year. She joins right in as a tribute artist as one of the fun girls who appeared in several episodes. Dixie shared thoughts on her famous father. He actually considered going into the ministry. He absolutely. Yep. So he brought a lot of those life lessons into the show. Oh, 100%. I think that's what makes it really special, too. Yeah. And I think that's why, you know, like second, third generations of families are watching the show. You know, they want their children to have those morals, to have those values. I like to say it kind of fills up your battery again. It, oh, I like that. So that you can go out in the world and face the things you have to face that aren't so great. Sure. But at least I've got a little more hope and love and kindness. Exactly. I love that. That's how I feel when I come down here. It's all family. Everybody's family. And that's what all this is. It's one big, amazing, beautiful family. And we'll be right back. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Small Town Big Deal. You know, when we got here, really, Rodney was the biggest Andy Griffith fan that I had ever met. You have been dethroned. Oh, several times over. Yeah. I mean, most of these folks are in a whole different league than me. But you know, the theme of this year's festival was Mayberry Makes Me Smile, and it sure did. Yeah, I know. We've both been smiling all weekend. And that's what we hope Small Town Big Deal does for you. We hope this show makes you smile. Hey, maybe one day there'll be a documentary, The Small Town Big Deal Effect. <laughs> I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. Join us again next week when once again we celebrate the great stories from across America. Welcome to Mayberry. I'm Juanita from the diner. Come she's visit my Juanita. Us. She's not everybody's Juanita, but she's my Juanita. <laughs> so after watching that, I think I'm out. <laughs> I think I'm going full force. Are you, are you are? I'm going to try. Do we have an award for the daintiest eater? <laughs> Thank you. For the Thank you, Dan. Marvelous to hope. You can have this empty can. Thank you. Mail me my trophy. You're not Barney Five. No, I'm Barney Five. You're not Barney Five. I'm Barney Five. I'm Barney Five. Well, if you're Barney Five, then I'm Barney Five. We're in the Twilight Zone. We must be in the Twilight Zone.